and Sunday, it's your chance to talk to John Updike, live on Book TV's In Depth. Starting at noon Eastern, he'll discuss his career, including his latest, Still Looking, Essays on American Art. John Updike, live, In Depth, Sunday on Book TV, on C-SPAN 2. We're at the Texas Book Festival with Nate Blakesley, the author of Tulia. This is about the town of Tulia, Texas. What happened there in 1999? Uh, in 1999 in Tulia, which is a small farming and ranching town in the Texas Panhandle, not far from Amarillo, uh, there was just an amazing drug bust. Forty-seven people were indicted for dealing cocaine, all by one single undercover officer. It was hailed as one of the biggest busts in West Texas history. The officer was named Officer of the Year. Um, over the next course of the next year, however, it went from being one of the biggest successes to being one of the biggest scandals in drug war history, and that's because uh, it was revealed that most of the cases were fabricated by this officer. Um, he never wore a wire uh, during the bus, he never had video, um, and he never, they never confiscated any cocaine when they went to round up all of these, all of the, uh, the uh, defendants. But um, nevertheless, they, they, all, they all went to trial, about two dozen of them ended up in prison, and so this, the book is really about this three-year struggle by this small group of attorneys to get them out of prison. Why did they go to prison? Why were they convicted? And why did this uh, Texas Lawman of the Year, Tom Coleman, uh, pursue these convictions? Well, they, they were convicted of dealing small amounts of powdered cocaine, just enough to get second-degree felonies, which is two to 20 years in prison. But uh, a large percentage of them were accused of dealing it within 1,000 feet of a school or a park, and that made it a first-degree felony. So now you have people facing 99 years for delivery of maybe $200 worth of cocaine, and again, all on the uncorroborated word of one narcotics officer. So that was a big part of the story is, why did they let him operate in that manner to begin with? And then why didn't they question the quality of the cases uh, w when they started to come back in uh, after no cocaine had been confiscated during the roundup, after he had no second officer corroborating his story? Um, and then the, the sentences were what really got me into the story because they were just amazing. The, the first man was convicted of, of dealing $200 worth of cocaine. He got 90 years. Uh, another young man got 361 years, uh, again, for just a, a, a series of small deliveries. And even some of the defendants with no prior records were getting the maximum sentence. Was there a race component to this story? That was one of the red flags that, that, that immediately stood out about this story, that the town of Tulia uh, is only about 5% black. Um, but 39 of the 47 people he indicted were African-American and so if you actually broke down the math he was accusing one in five black adults in this tiny little ranching town of dealing powdered cocaine. It was, it was absurd on the face of it and yet they pushed through the prosecutions anyway. You covered this story for the Texas Observer. Did your coverage uh, have something to do with the reversal of the convictions? Well, our, our, we did the first investigative story in the Observer and that led to uh, a, a major uh, breaking of, of the story. It was re-reported for the New York Times, the LA Times, CNN, and then it just became a huge national scandal. Um, just, just the infuriating thing was, though, that even after everybody agreed it was a huge scandal and laws have been passed here at the Capitol to make sure it never happened again, you still had two dozen people that were in prison and very little going on to get them out. And so they, they literally sat in prison um, up to four years in some cases um, until finally this this post-conviction process got going, and that's what I chronicle in the book, this, this great group of pro bono attorneys, some of them from Washington, D.C., led by a young woman named Vanita Gupta from the NAACP Legal Defense Fund in New York, and, and a great uh, pro bono attorney named Jeff Blackburn from Amarillo, along with some very dedicated activists here in Austin and in Tulia. Um, and the story is really about their, their four-year struggle, and I got to be a fly on the wall during all the legal strategies, and it was just, and, and, and it all came to a head uh, in the spring of 2003, and this, this just amazing courtroom showdown in the town of Tulia, and got to be there for the hearings and backstage of the hearings. It was just an amazing process. What was the ultimate outcome of this story? Um, in uh, the summer of uh, 2003, the, the, the uh, cases were all thrown out. So everybody that was convicted based on the word of this narc in, in Tulia uh, was exonerated, with the exception of one person. Uh, and then later they were all pardoned by Governor Perry. And the story led to a major reorganization of the way uh, narcotics enforcement is done in Texas. And it really cast uh, a, a bad light on, on this type of narcotics enforcement nationwide and has really, is really called into question this model of, of, of drug task force law enforcement that was involved in this case in Tulia. Nate Blakesley, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. New York Times op-ed columnist Maureen Dowd writes about the battle of the sexes in her new book, Are Men Necessary? She spoke about it recently at Miami Book Fair International for 35 minutes.
Thank you all for coming to see me this morning. <laughs> Good morning, Miami. Hello, C-SPAN, book TV devotees. Hello, women in the audience.